Welcome back to Duran ASEAN. You're with me, Gauri. And me, Arlene. And you're listening to DuranASEAN.com, the voice of discovery and sharing. And for now, we are moving on to our ABC dialogue for today. And we will, of course, be uh, still addressing the Sedition Act and also uh, t- touching a little bit on the uh, Asmi Sharon case. Mm-hmm. And together with us is actually Sharizan Johan. And he is the... the Chairperson of the National Young Lawyers Committee. Hello. Hi. Good morning. How are you today? I'm all right, thank you. Thank, thank you, you for, for having me. Thank you studio. for coming. <laughs> so, uh, Sharis and Johan, you you were part of the statement giving persons together with Azmi Sharom in the article that was supposed to be the reason why Azmi Sharom was charged under the Sedition uh, Act. Yes, I yes I was. Um, and. Uh, I, I think, thanks for pointing it out. Uh, if the authorities are listening to this, then <laughs> they might just realize that I'm, I'm also in the article. But no, I think um, I really am not sure why uh, Azmi Sharum was uh, singled out uh, because what he said as compared to what um, I said and what uh, I think that the other person was, uh, Dr. Aziz Bari said in that article, I mean, it's, there's, it's we're just expressing our opinions. Uh, with regards to the Slango crisis and comparing it with the situation in Perak in 2009. And uh, maybe you want to give us a, a little background to the case because uh, it is a very heated topic now, but a lot of people may, may not be following. So maybe if you can just break it down for us, you know, how, how it happened. Well, actually, um, from what I understand, um, after the article came out, mm. um, Dr. Azmi was asked to attend a police station to give a statement about uh, what he said in the article. Now, I'm not sure whether um, there was any police report lodged against uh, what was said in that article, mm-hmm. but I do know that um, the Dr. Azmi, as well as the person who wrote that uh, feature in uh, uh, that web portal, uh, was called uh, to give statements. And then later on, um, I think it was on uh, last Monday, uh, found out we found out that uh, Dr. Azmi was going to be charged. So I personally called mm-hmm. him up and, and clarified whether it's it, he, he is indeed going to be charged and he confirmed. And I think from then on, I think Twitter just exploded and mm-hmm. uh, the story just exploded and it went viral. And the next day, everybody just turned up and Dr. Azmi, when Dr. Azmi was charged. Now, he was charged under the Sedition Act under uh, two charges, or uh, it, it, it's alternative charges. So, meaning um, he can either be found guilty of one or the other. So, it's not two charges, it's actually alternative charges. Mm-hmm. And he was charged for making these statements in the... Um, uh, what do you call that in the article? In uh, the Malay Mail. In the Malay Mail online. Mm. And uh, if I can just read it out. Mm-hmm. Yes, please. And I think you don't want a repeat of that where a secret meeting took place. He was, of course, referring to the what happened in Perak. Mm-hmm. I think what happened in Perak was legally wrong. The best thing to do is to do it as legally and transparently as possible. Now, let me ask your listeners. Do you think that this is seditious? What is wrong with this statement? Now, Professor Azmi is a lecturer and he has been a member of academia, I think, for about more than 20 years. So he has the wealth of experience and everyone is entitled to an opinion. But when you're giving uh, uh, an opinion legally uh, from a point of view of someone who has been uh, you know, teaching law mm-hmm. for that long, I think you should take it as an opinion coming from a legal expert. Mm-hmm. So why is it that the Attorney General saw fit to charge Dr. Azmi under sedition? Well, he was brought to charge because according to uh, what is being reported in the media, he brought into hatred or contempt or excited the affection against the administration of justice in Malaysia or in any state. 
No, but I think I think uh, there needs to be a clear distinction between exciting disaffection against the administration of justice or hatred against the administration of justice and actually critiquing a judgment. And that's what he's doing. He thinks that it's legally wrong. And that's what he said. Did he say that uh, uh, anything about the judges? No. And lawyers do that all the time. We critique judgments. And that's how you, you uh, expand the law. When you look at a, a piece of legislation or you look at a piece of judgment and you say that, look, there are some uh, uh, problems with this, there are some weaknesses, this is not correct. I mean, that's how you expand the law and that's how you develop the law. So if we are going to say that, no, you can't even criticize a court judgment, then I think uh, we're going to see a, a situation where there will not be any intellectual discourse in Malaysia. What's the response of the government when it comes to the justification of his charges? Well, apparently from what I, I can see is that they are saying that oh, this is something which the courts have to decide. I mean, uh, we are separate from the Attorney General's chambers. Um, uh, this is something that uh, the the court will have to decide because he's already been charged in court. Now, of course, at the end of the day, I mean, he's not been found guilty yet. But if you look at how the act is drafted, if you look at the provisions of the act, you will see that actually it's not difficult to get a conviction under the Sedition Act. And I think we will explore this uh, in greater mm -hmm. detail later. So to say that, oh, this is something for the courts to decide, yes, of course. But why is it that you decided to charge him in the first place? And more so after there was a promise made by the Prime Minister to abolish the Sedition Act, to repeal the Sedition Act. Um, Has the Prime Minister given any comment uh, well, since the incident? As far as I know, there's no comments given from uh, the Prime Minister. And I think um, there isn't any official uh, statement from Cabinet. I think there might be... Miscommunication <laughs> between the one charging it and the Prime Minister. No, I mean, of, course, of course, the person charging it is... Uh, is you, you can say that it's separate entities, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, one is the Attorney General mm -hmm. and then the other one is the government. But what we're saying here is this. You have promised to abolish it, okay? You have not abolished it. And now what we're seeing is we're seeing an increase in... The, uh, the Sedition Act being used. That, that is right. Uh, this morning we reported that two people, two more people were actually charged under the Sedition Act and one was a Sabahan politician mm -hmm. and the other one was actually just a news, uh, online news reporter. Mm. In Penang. Mm -hmm. uh, were they charged? I think the online news reporter was investigated mm -hmm. and I'm not sure whether she's going to be charged yet but I, I surely hope that he will not come to that because, you know, we've already had um, a member of the academia being charged. Mm -hmm. We do not want to see journalists being charged uh, as well. Um, this, this, is, this is a comment made by um, one of the previous speakers that we had. He said mm -hmm. that to some people, especially um, academicians or opposition party leaders and all that, they see being charged through acts like the Sedition Act as a platform for them to rise to Superstardom. Do you agree with that statement? Well, I mean, why, how they take it is not really not our concern when we talk about abolishing the Sedition Act, when we advocate against abolishing the Sedition Act. I mean, it might be something which is uh, uh, good for the person charged, you know, in terms of public profile and all that. But at the end of the day, uh, the principle is still the same, that there are problems with this act and this act should go. So what the side effects are, the benefits are to the person being charged, um, I think it's a secondary matter. And also we must remember, not everyone is uh, 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 an opposition politician. You know, there are people being investigated. No, so we're not talking just about being charged here. We're talking about investigated. I mean, that can be quite intimidating as well. There are people, normal people, who are investigated and charged under the Sedition Act. And, and they, they do not care about, you know, uh, the limelight or anything like that. All they care about mm -hmm. is that they are facing this uh, investigation and they are facing these charges. But do you agree that you know all this support to abolish the Sedition Act is actually a populist move? Well, it's if you like against the government rather than you know like the real thing. Well, I think if you look at it, we are just well. I'm talking about the NYLC at least with with our advocacy campaign. We are just asking the government to 
uh, fulfill its promise. Now, the government themselves have admitted that this act is no longer suitable. By saying that you're going to repeal it, you are acknowledging that this act um, is no longer suitable for the current situation. So we're asking the government, look, you have already yourself acknowledged that there is a problem with this act. And the Malaysian bar, uh, through its precedents, have always taken a position against Sedition Act. So what is happening now is actually just a continuation of the advocacy that has been started uh, many, many years ago. So the very fact that we are coming up with this uh, campaign and there's a lot of talk about abolishing the sedition, of course, it's a, because we see an increase in it. But at the same time, if you still take it back and you look at from the start uh, uh, how people have been talking about the Sedition Act, there has been movements or rather there have been uh, calls to abolish the Sedition Act from the Malaysian Bar and civil society NGOs even back then, even before this quote-unquote crackdown happen. And earlier you were saying that there is no clear distinction between, uh, you know, when it comes to inciting hatred or contempt or inc- exciting disaffection. And these are very subjective words, you know, like hatred and contempt. There is no way to measure these things. So how, how do you actually, how do they actually call the shots here? This is the problem with the Sedition Act. Hmm. If you look at the Sedition Act, basically, all you need to prove is that these words are uttered. You don't have to prove intention, for example. So if I say something and um, let's just say that uh, they are charging me uh, for saying a seditious word Mm -hmm. and then they say that what I'm saying is raising discontent against uh, the administration of justice, for example. They don't have to prove that I actually had the intention to, to, to raise discontent. For example, in Dr. Azmi's case, mm-hmm. they don't have to show that actually Dr. Azmi, when he said that, he actually had in mind, had the intention that people will hate uh, the courts for coming up with this judgment. You don't have to prove that. The other thing that you don't have, uh, the, the, the other problem is that if you look at the Sedition Act and the various, uh, what constitutes a seditious tendency, it is so wide. Mm. Anything you say can technically be sedition, you know. Because uh, if you, for example, criticize the government, of course, as a member of the politician, for example, uh, mm-hmm. a member of uh, uh, the opposition uh, ranks, of course, that person would want to excite or, or make the government to not like the, sorry, make the people not like the government, right? Mm-hmm. Of course, they would want to do that. But that is their modus operandi as Opposition. I mean, if the opposition is going to say, okay, love the government, then there's no point of being Having opposition. Having an opposition. opposition. Mm-hmm. So, obviously, but if you look at the Sedition Act and you look at what constitutes a seditious tendency, anything said against the government can actually be considered seditious and they can be charged. Mm-hmm. Similarly, the mm-hmm. government and also the ruler. And the ruler, And yes. the ruler is defined as the Yang Lipetuan Agong. Yes, and or any and of all the, the any uh, of the or, yeah. or the states. Yeah. So so um, uh, that's the other problem with it. It's it's too wide, you know. Uh, so but but I want to raise on one issue here. Mm. It was formed. I mean, the Sedition Act was formed in 1984. It was prior to Medeka. Oh, no, sorry, 19, <laughs> sorry, I miss up. Yeah. I think about George Orwell. <laughs> <laughs> 1984. <laughs> She's Sorry. dyslexic. <laughs> 1948. 1948. It was yeah. prior to Medeka. Yes. And there's a reason for it. Do you think, you know, the, the the Sedition Act was created during the era where it was needed? Or it was, it was you know, it shouldn't have existed in any form, in any way, or any era? Okay. Um, the Sedition Act in Malaysia was actually um, enacted by the British. And the reason why they enacted it was to ensure that the colonial subjects, state colonial subjects, meaning they do not rise up against uh, the British colonial authority. Primarily, it was supposed to be used against the communist insurgents at that particular point in time. Uh, But um, what is ironic, actually, is that the British never actually uh, used it against uh, communists or even used it at all. Oh, was it? it? Yes. <laughs> it was only after we achieved independence that the Sedition Act 
uh, started being used by the by the government. But why the British colon, colonial government at that time did not use it? Like, is there a reason? It, what was there? But I'm sure during that era they were hmm. people against the government. I mean, they were hatal at that time, wasn't it? Yeah, but there's a lot of uh, other laws that they can use. You know. Um, uh, at that particular point in time, and and no one really was talking about democracy or anything like that. You Malayans, when you talk about uh, Peninsular Malaysia, were colonial subjects, so they had other means to quell uprisings. You know, they didn't have to charge these people or investigate these people. Uh, you know, they, they, there's there's uh, 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 offences under the penal code which they can use. So it was just another law which they put in place. And actually, Malaysia is not unique. The law was put in place in other uh, countries as well. Uh, India, mm-hmm. there is a similarly a uh, sedition act. And in the in US, they have the sedition act, which they say is supposed to be espionage act. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, uh, but in talk when you're talking about the the Commonwealth experience, uh, you have like Australia, um, you have uh, New Zealand. Of course, back in the United Kingdom, uh, they do they had. The Sedition Act as well, and the Sedition Act actually um, uh, came during a time where the ruler, or, or rather the uh, uh, what do you call it, the king, can never be questioned. Mm-hmm. That was how sedition came about, because the king had authority from God, and therefore they should never be questioned. Mm-hmm. Slowly, this was distilled, and from ruler, from the king, it became the government. And from the government, it became the colonial authorities in these colonies. That's how it 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 uh, you know was given uh, the British colonial authority uh, gave birth to the various sedition uh, legislations in the colonial in the colonies. Mm-hmm. Which era uh, since independence where the government actually used sedition act to to do uh, to for, for any other re- for any reason just. Well, it, Just it, use it. it has been used um, uh, intermittently throughout the years. You know, mm. uh, it has been used uh, um, against when, when, uh, for example, against uh, members of the academia before this. It has been used uh, against, of course, opposition politicians before this. But at the same time, uh, the government also had the ISA. So the ISA is a much easier act to use because you don't even have to prove anything. Yeah, and during mm-hmm. Mahathir's time, they have the Operasi Lalang. Operasi Lalang, you know, and uh, um, they had IC at that time, so they didn't have to prove. So they, they you know, the uh, the the main choice, the main preference is to just use the IC because you just can catch these people and just lock them up, you know. But I can, I think we can safely say that after the uh, announcement to repeal the Sedition Act, we have actually seen. An increase, a spike in sedition uh, charges and also sedition investigations uh, compared to any other periods in our history. I think you can safely say that. Because yes, there were convictions and investigations before this, mm-hmm. but it was spaced out. You know, it wasn't at a, a, a moment. Uh, uh, point of history, but I think from 2012 right up to 2014, we have seen a marked increase in sedition, uh, that sedition act being used. But why is it uh, still important to protect the Yang Di Pertuan Agong or our monarchy instead of just maybe say the prime minister and and the ruling uh, party of the Personally, country? Personally, I I don't think that we need to have a law mm. to protect the monarchy because you know why. The monarchy is already protected by the federal constitution, the highest law in the land, mm-hmm. the granum. You know, you cannot <laughs> simply uh, 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 change or amend or whatever when it comes to um, uh, the rulers. So they are already protected. So you don't have to have a law to actually protect them from, you know, being insulted or whatever. You know, it's already their position is not going to change. Mm-hmm. And again, I want to stress on this. You want people to respect the government. You want people to respect authority. You want people to respect the courts. You don't do it through law. You do it through awareness. You do it through your actions. Why is it that people are not disrespect? Uh, people are disrespecting the government, or people are saying bad things about the government, for example, because you look at what you have been doing. 
I suppose. You know, so if you do it through law, you're not going to get achieve the so-called harmony that you want to achieve by using the Sedition Act. Law mm-hmm. is not the answer to all our problems, really. But do you think we're there yet? <laughs> I think we will never be there if we have this act. Okay. This act actually stifles that development. So we need to get rid of it and then we can talk about Because we look at what's happening these days. You know, you, people want to comment about what's happening in, mm-hmm. so, uh, in slang. Or people are being very, very careful. You know, if Dr. Azmi mm-hmm. can be charged for saying what he thinks and uh, he, he's saying it as a member of the academia uh, from, a, from the point of view of a legal expert, then what more normal people? Mm-hmm. You know, so people are going to be very, very uh, 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 careful about what they say and there are going to be a lot of self-censorship. Okay, we're going to take a short break now. So when we come back, we will uh, probably dig deeper into the uh, station egg. The Colors of Sherry Hello and welcome back to Duran ASEAN. You're with Gauri and Arlene. And we are going to continue our discussion about the Sedition Act. And of course, Sharizan is still here with us. Hello. You still okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm enjoying myself. He's flipping through the laws. <laughs> yeah, looking through his notes. So uh, during the break, we were just uh, talking about the offenses related to the seditious tendency. And you you said you'd like to elaborate more on that. Yes. Um, actually, I think um, we must understand that mm. the offense of offenses under the Sedition Act is found are found in Section 4 of the Sedition Act, which includes things like um, uttering any seditious words or does anything which is which has a seditious tendency or prints any seditious publication or imports any uh, seditious publication. Mm. But, but when you say seditious word, right, sorry, I'm going to interrupt yeah. you for a bit. Do they have a list of words that are considered seditious or is it subjective? No, they don't have a list of words that is considered seditious. But what is seditious can actually be found mm. in the interpretation section to the Act, okay. which says that seditious, when applied to or used in any respect of any act, speech, words, publication, is one that has a seditious tendency. Mm-hmm. So what is anything what is seditious tendency you look at then section 3 mm-hmm. this is where you have all these uh, instances where it can be uh, it, uh, where words or anything said can have a seditious tendency mm-hmm. to just give an example uh, 31a says that a seditious tendency is a tendency to bring into hatred or contempt or excite disaffection against any ruler or against any government. And uh, I'm curious about the word government mm-hmm. because in the interpretation of government, it means the government of Malaysia and of any state. Let's say uh, a certain kind of politician says something seditious towards the opposition uh, controlled government, mm-hmm. let's say in Penang or Kelantan or Selangor. Would that be... Can they charge yeah, those yeah, they can. them under they the can, seditious but, law? But, but they won't. Uh, that's <laughs> number one. And number two, I think it doesn't matter. I think any... Uh, what's wrong with criticizing or saying something against um, any government, regardless of whether it's the federal government or the state government? Mm-hmm. So uh, the point of the, uh, of the advocacy against uh, the Sedition Act is not... Uh, that it's it's being used um, in a way that is not fair. The point of it is that it can the way the act is structured can be used for uh, this kind of political purposes. Yeah, let's go back into the offenses that you mentioned. Yes, mm-hmm. and one of it is about um, prints, publishes, sells, offers for sales, distribute, distributes, or reproduces any seditious publication. So when it comes to the Malay Mail Online. Would they fall under this category? I'm just curious. Yeah, I, I, I think if the, the Attorney General really wants to uh, charge Malaysia online, I, I think it would probably be under 4C, mm-hmm. 4-1-C. Of course, I really hope they don't <laughs> do that. Maybe they overlook it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe now that Aline brought it up, <laughs> you know, like, yeah, <laughs> I should have charged Malaysia <laughs> online in this. <laughs> So going back to your yeah so so um uh, that was just one of the seditious tendency mm-hmm. so there's a, a list of what is considered 
uh, uh, seditious tendency. And if you look at the list, mm-hmm. it's really very wide. Mm-hmm. And it puts the threshold at such a low point that anything said can be seditious. And this is, as I mentioned, the problem with the Sedition Act, mm-hmm. that the threshold is really low and it can be used for anything. You know, when you say something about a political party, for example, I think um, one of the uh, state assembly persons in Penang, mm-hmm. RSN Raya, actually said something about a political party, about AMNO, mm-hmm. and he was charged. You know, so what's the, the threshold is really low, and this really stifles. Uh, freedom of speech and freedom of expression as provided for under the federal constitution. Mm-hmm. And there were amendments uh, yes. in 1969 yes. after the racial riot. Yes. What were the amendments? The amendments uh, uh, was to actually include this uh, additional clause as to what constitutes seditious tendency. Mm-hmm. Uh, to say that a seditious tendency also means to question any matter, right, status, position privileged, sovereign, or prerogative established or protected by provisions of Part 3 of the Federal Constitution mm. or Articles 152, 153, or 181 of the Federal Constitution. So technically, if you question Article 153, which is the Bumiputra rights... Bumiputra, uh, the, the, the special position of the Malays and the natives of Sabah and Sarawak. That's yeah, the actual <laughs> that's the actual I, I don't like to use right. the word right when you talk about Article 153 mm-hmm. because the Article 152 doesn't give any right. Mm-hmm. Okay. So if if any of us question uh, uh the the I mean if we any of us question any of the matter that you mentioned just yes. now, it will fall under the um. It can be a seditious tendency. It can be a seditious yes. tendency, and I I also can't help to see the word uh, the sentence to promote feelings of ill will yes. and hostility between different races and classes yeah. of the population in yeah. Malaysia. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, a lot of the right wing groups in Malaysia have done that. Yeah, and and. <laughs> Except for the Isma president, uh, none of them have been charged. Mm-hmm. But again, uh, I don't want to go into this de- this discussion, or rather, I, we don't want to go too much into why is it that some people are being charged and some mm-hmm. other people are not. Because the principle is that the act should go, and we are against any um, charge or investigations against anyone, mm-hmm. even though we. St- Strongly disagree. In fact, even though we ab- abhor that person, mm. as I do with the Isma president, I will still say that he should not be charged under the sedition. He act. should let. He should be. Uh, he, he should have the right to say whatever he yes. wants. Yes. Mm. This is this is the thing. What should be the threshold is harm. So if you say something and you incite something, people to actually go out there and cause physical harm, whether it's uh, 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 what do you call it, injury to persons, or whether it is uh, uh, damage to property, then you can, you should take action. Mm-hmm. But just by being racist, just by being a bigot, that should not be a reason to charge. Because again, the best way to deal with these people is, of course, to me, is ignore them. And number two, if you don't want to ignore them, you engage with them, mm-hmm. you know. So not to charge them because th- that's the opposite of what you should be doing. So you made it pretty clear there that you are definitely not for this act, right? You're yeah, against the seditious act, it should be abolished. Act, should yeah. be abolished. Yeah. But there are probably some people would say that, you know, this is a multiracial country and we probably need something to to, uh, safeguard the the harmony. Yeah, especially with the experiences that we had in the May 13, 1969. Mm -hmm. uh, It's more than anything the government would use that to justify Mm -hmm. the Sedition Act. Well, you look at at our current penal code. Mm -hmm. You already have uh, provisions under the penal code to cater to these uh, situations. So if someone actually incites people to go out there and and, uh, uh, create all sorts of trouble, you've got the penal code. And the threshold in the penal code is higher because you have that uh, intention element where you actually have to prove that they had the intention to do all these things. Mm -hmm. You just... Compare that to the Sedition Act where it's all you need to prove is that the person said those things. That's all, Mm -hmm. effectively. Well, there's another speaker that we interviewed yesterday and he's on the position that the law has been abused the mm-hmm. sedition act mm-hmm. law meaning that it is still needed in certain you know in certain situation like we mentioned earlier mm-hmm. even with the penal code uh, we still need a law that mm-hmm. can protect our national security and as well as to protect the harmony between different races mm-hmm. and the legitimacy of the monarchy and mm-hmm. the government mm-hmm. but in your point of view which is totally the opposite. Like to you, we shouldn't have it all. Mm. Like, would 
it jeopardizes our national security, the harmony between different uh, faith and religion uh, and and race races in this country. If we abolish the Sedition Act, I give you an example. Just a few years ago, um, Prakasa actually said that they're going to burn some Bibles. Remember that? Now, no action was taken against him, yeah? But there was no riot. There was no problems. And this is an act of extreme provocation, Mm -hmm. you know? So I'm saying that you don't need a law to maintain peace and harmony. You don't need this kind of law to maintain peace and harmony. If really it was used to, to... to quell uh, uh, or to stop people from, you know, to, to maintain the harmony and all that. But what about against extremes, extreme groups like, you know, for example, like radical Islamist group? You've got the terrorism uh, offences under the penal code. You've got those offences. And of course, I mean, I'm not advocating SOSMA either, but you have that provision, that act, the SOSMA act, which the government can use. Again, I'm against SOSMA, but... There is that provision that, that that can be used to cater or to deal with terrorists, you know. So there's enough laws, really. I think the speaker yesterday also said that the reason they have not yet uh, abolished the Sedition Act is probably because they are waiting to come up with with something better, a, a modification, or which is the National Harmony mm. Act. Two years have <laughs> gone past, you know. In fact, I can tell you this: mm. I was part of the working committee under the NUCC, mm-hmm. drafting the three uh, uh, bills. And when we drafted those three bills, uh, it's really ready. We The NUCC then, because after that, we, we're just acting uh, on behalf or rather the N- upon request of the NUCC. The NUCC put it up for public consultation. Mm-hmm. Some people do not like and some right-wing groups do not like those bills and it gets shelved. And now the government is saying that, oh, we're going to postpone it to next year. For what reason, we don't know. But the point is, it's there. What is the government waiting for? Mm. You know, that we have already drafted the bill. I mean, if you say that, okay, this is not good enough, what are the amendments that you need to make? But why is it that you must uh, push it to next year, for example? And at the same time, why is it that there is an increase in the uh, use of the Sedition Act? So it's one thing... You know, saying that uh, the act, uh, you need to have a replacement act. But why is it that you're using it again and again? In fact, using it uh, in a matter of like in these past few weeks, mm-hmm. I think every other day there's someone charged or investigated under the Sedition Act. I think every Malaysian can be charged. Yeah. <laughs> because it, co- it doesn't care about the spaces where it is being uttered, yeah, right? It or it's being done. It doesn't matter whether it's public or private. It doesn't matter whether there's anyone who actually heard it. When you say something, it doesn't matter. If I can prove that you said those things, then um, my job is basically done. You know, I don't even have to prove uh, that actually... One intention. I don't even have to prove that actually uh, uh, anyone is uh, 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 actually incited by what I I said. You know, like that article, nobody, Mm -hmm. perhaps even, not many people even read that Dr. Azmi's article. You know, and no one actually felt, oh, the courts are, are really wrong or whatever. But that doesn't matter. All that matters is that if they can prove that Dr. Azmi said those words, then that's enough. Mm-hmm. What about uh, the National Harmony Act? Mm. How different it is compared to the Sedition Act? Okay, um, when it, the National Harmony Act was um, actually when the Prime Minister first announced that they're going to repeal the Sedition Act, he said that it's going to be replaced by the National Harmony Act. Subsequently, I think... Uh, there were some drafting of the National Harmony Act and all that. Then it came to the NUCC. And NUCC was then tasked to actually come up with this so-called National Harmony Act. And what the NUCC came up with was three different bills, Mm -hmm. okay, Uh, collectively known as the National Unity Bills. But individually, they're known as the uh, uh, Race and Religious Hatred Crimes Act the National Unity and Consultation uh, Commission Act and the National Unity and uh, Reconciliation uh, Act. So there's three different Mm -hmm. bills. But the one that is supposed to directly replace the Sedition Act is the first act, the Racial and Religious Hatred Crimes Act. Okay, And according to this act, the way that it is drafted, the threshold is really higher than what it is now. Under the Sedition Act, when you want to take action against someone who promotes 
uh, racial hatred, there must be an element of harm. You know, just by being racist, just by uh, uh, saying something, uh, uh, promoting the supremacy of one race, that's not enough. Okay, that shouldn't be criminalized. There must actually be harm. So, for example, he must actually say, let's go out there and kill all of people of ethnicity A, for example. Mm. That's where the act comes in. Okay, so, it's, it's much higher. So, when you talk about how you want to deal and you want to ensure that national harmony is uh, uh, taken care of, if you say that you really need a law, then this is the way. So, But you do agree that we should have a law. No, I don't actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you said... Uh, I drafted awareness. it. Yeah, yeah I, I personally think that how you deal with these kind of things, you need to, uh, the best way is through awareness and understanding and tolerance. And but you're that saying that if there is a law, then the threshold should, should at least be, be yes. higher. Uh-huh. If you need a law, mm. if the government thinks you need a law, then this is the law that, that, that should be, the threshold should be much higher. Mm-hmm. But if you're speaking of awareness, let's talk about that. How? What is the, the modus operandi? There's so many, uh, what do you call it, initiatives mm-hmm. by civil society NGOs out mm-hmm. there. You know, Kita Malaysia, all these but other But there's things. a problem. A lot of these civil society um, groups are mainly targeting areas that are, you know, middle class. What about those who are from the rural areas, out of touch with society, the, the general society? I would like actually say the rural areas are far more integrated than we are. <laughs> You know, you go to uh, rural Kelantan, for example. I mean, you you see perhaps how they interact mm. with each other in terms of different races. You go to, uh, I go back to my kampung in Muar, for example. I can see that there's more meaningful interaction between uh, different races as compared to over here. I want to ask you one question. So, Merdeka Centre did a survey about mm. May 13. Would right. it happen? I uh, will. W- would it happen again? Mm-hmm. Um, in the future or in the near future. And surprisingly, when he did the pool uh, among young Malays, he, he found out that they are much more radicalized than the Malays in the past. Mm-hmm. In other sense, they could be, they, they, they could be um, another May 13 happen mm. somewhere in the future. And, and if, let's say if it happens, I hope it not, it, it doesn't happen. Let's say it happens, what I mean, we, we should have a law to at least prevent it, right? There's like a, a penal code. Law. There's a penal code. <laughs> you can't take action under the penal code. There's enough there under the penal code to take action against people who want to create trouble. Mm. You know? Can, can you mention specifically which code that it's... Uh, well, which provision under the penal code that uh, these people can be charged? For if example, uh, um, if there's uh, uh, an incitement, there is... I can't remember the exact provision, but there are... Uh, uh, offences under the penal code to cater with incitement to violence, for example, mm. criminal intimidation, for example, uh, what do you call it? Breach of the breach of the peace, public nuisance, all these other these these offences under the penal code. The penal code is filled with offences. <laughs> Whatever offences yes, that you want. Can, any, but yeah. but if you say it like that, then why we even need the National Harmony Act again? That's why if you ask me, <laughs> if you really ask me, then right. you don't need. But you know, if the government thinks that uh, you need an act to cater mm. to uh, with this kind of situations, then I'm saying that okay, mm. you should just look at what NUCC has drafted. That is enough. Make me make make some amendments to it. So what are the days? Penal code. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the penal code, really. So uh, I think we're almost at the end of our discussion. Mm. But before we finish, since it's um, Merdeka Day and mm-hmm. Malaysia Day and all. What are your hopes for Malaysia? What do you aspire Malaysia to be? And what's your ideal Malaysia? Uh, well, <laughs> my ideal Malaysia is uh, a Malaysia that accepts each other. A Malaysia that will, will uh, actually not... We don't need to look at laws mm. to solve our problems. You know, interaction, our acceptance of each other is the main consideration. And that is how we're going to move forward. Because I think there's a big problem with acceptance. When people still look at other races as immigrants and all these other things, then we have a problem. Because people are not accepting each other. And I think the the problem also stems from the fact that we keep using the word tolerance. Mm -hmm. We should stop using that. We should use the word acceptance. Because tolerance is like, I don't like you, but I'm going to just tolerate you. Mm -hmm. Accept is that I'm accepting. You are a Malaysian, you are a Malaysian, you are a Malaysian. Every one of us has a place under the Malaysian sun. Mm-hmm. Including Isma. Including <laughs> Isma. You know, including Isma, really. So we're all brothers and sisters here. Yes. You know, we don't like each other, but that's how brothers and sisters are. Right. 
Okay, uh, thank you so much, Sharizan, for joining us in thank the you. studio today and thank for, you. you know, enlightening us on the Sedition Act. Thank you. And yeah, we hope for the best uh, for Azmi Sharum and also yes. mm-hmm. uh, the other two uh, persons yeah. that are now being charged under yes. the Sedition Act. Yep, abolish Sedition Act. <laughs>